He's Steven Stars Gilfoyle. She's Olivia the Vaz Vaznenko. This is Street Smarts. Good afternoon, Olivia. Hi, Steven. <laughs> Here we are again. Who can do a better Clint Eastwood, me or Steven? <laughs> I don't know if I can do Clint Eastwood, but... Uh, well, the markets are, because what are we going to call today's show? The good, the bad, and the ugly, and the macro. I feel like I'm always clapping. <laughs> I don't know why I'm clapping for that, but you know what? Wall Street cheerleader. All right, Steven, let's get into it. All right, so uh, where are we? The markets are a little higher today, a little risk on, but it, once again, we're doing sort of an afternoon fade. We're seeing yep, the markets come coming in. Coming in a little bit. That's this the theme. It seems to be a risk-off move almost every afternoon these days. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know how many in a row it is, but it's, it's getting up there. But we did see movement back into tech and into discretionaries. So it feels to me like it's game on. Maybe it's start, start, time to start, and I already have started actually, redeploying some of that capital that I drew out of the markets over the last couple months of volatility. Not that I'm giving everyone the all clear, but I'm feeling a little more comfortable with risk. All right, cool. So where we, where we start with that? Okay. Let's, You're um, talking Netflix, I'm, I'm guessing. Oh, Netflix. I actually lost money on Netflix. Oh, okay. So, he's not so, so that's the ugly. <laughs> I made so that then, up in Goldman Sachs, but I made money in Netflix. So that's the ugly. What else is ugly, Stephen? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, let's talk about, I guess, the atmosphere. All right? All right. We have a politically charged atmosphere. It's a danger. It, it's, it continues to probably be something of a drag on the market on different levels. We have a number of scandals or supposed scandals that are impacting at least the media's behavior around the White House. I don't think it's behaving White House, the White House policy-wise. Instability has been a problem. The cabinet's been a revolving door. I, I don't think that's a positive. Trade conflicts aren't going anywhere. China's on a back burner now. Yes. But I don't think that's going away anytime soon. I think it's going to be a long, drawn-out thing. May 15th is the hearing in D.C. Mm -hmm. May 22nd is when we're supposed to implement some of these tariffs. So that's certainly going to be a risk for the markets as we move on. Yeah. Syria and Russia, are there going to be more sanctions on the Russians? Is the president pulling that back now? I don't know. It certainly did help our defense names that we spoke about quite often. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad we got along those names. And lastly, probably the greatest threat, well, other than the yield curve, because that's a pretty serious threat. Okay, we'll get into that in a sec. But the greatest single threat to the marketplace moving forward is probably the potential of the Democrats taking back the legislature in November. Are you calling the Democrats evil? I'm not calling the Democrats evil. I am saying that I'm trying to be objective, although I am I a biased guy on this. Uh, but I, I think That's that... That's okay, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that this president, I just did my taxes last night. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how much less I'm paying on the same income. I mean, this is... I, I expected it, but it's even better than I expected. I mean, if every American feels this way once they see their taxes for 2018 then I think you won't have that problem in November. But given that most people do their taxes once a year, they don't do quarterly estimates, this may, that, may, that effect may come in 2018. So that with the election in November, you might have some people that don't like the way the president behaves, which I don't really like the way he behaves all the time either. I'll say that. And they might go against the Republicans who have been very pro-business. And I think that will hurt. Obviously, we're seeing the benefits of deregulation and tax cuts on earnings this quarter. Yeah. All right. And speaking of earnings, we have this little pattern with the banks where they beat, well, you know, the headline beats at least, and then people take profits. The stock goes lower. So, Stephen, we took a look at the yield curve, right? That well, could be a major, a major thing that the talking heads aren't talking about except street smarts. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, <laughs> it's alarming how quickly the, uh, the spread between the two wow. and the 10 years what is contracting. It at? 40, 43 basis points. I mean, that's big, guys. Only a few weeks ago, we were doing the show, and I remember you asked me what I like to see as far as that spread goes. And as a guy who has traditionally traded the banks, I like to see that spread above 80, 80 basis yeah. points. And I was willing to hang on to 60, but we have contracted from 60 to, to, 40, to the low 40s in a very, very quick amount of time. And that will portend if history repeats itself, and it usually has, into a, a recession over the next year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. And I read a graph that one of the biggest, um, that the flattening yield curve would affect insurance companies the most. So it, that's, it affects insurance. And it, it, with it, the most. It impacts traditional banking, which mm -hmm. nobody seems to figure out why the banks reported good quarters and they're all coming in. It seems... 
It seems plain to me this would be a major reason why, right, right there in our faces. Yeah. Well, remember, there's Dodd Frank too. That yeah. hasn't rolled. That, that's been. That's been. <laughs> that hasn't been rolled back to our liking, right? Right. But I mean, it, to their liking. There's. Aside from the, let's go to the banks. I guess we could do the banks now. We, we brought them up. I was going to save them for the last, but let's. Yeah. All right. J.P. Morgan trading revenue. We, we told you that we were looking for trading as a special focus for this quarter. We told you that last week. J.P. Morgan's trading was fine. In fact, J.P. Morgan had a good quarter. J.P. Morgan came in a little bit with the other banks. I am long J.P. Morgan on a discount below 110. Not right here. We're trading right on 111. Below 110, I will add to that position, or at least that's my intent right now. Mm -hmm. Citigroup, another name I'm long. A little disappointing on investment banking. Otherwise, a pretty solid quarter. I'm, tr I'm, I'm already running with a full position in Citigroup, so I'm not going to add to it. My target price is about $10 higher. I'm also not going to sell the name. I'm, gonna stay, I'm, I'm happy to stay where I am in Citigroup. They, we expect them to give a lot back to the shareholder in terms of dividend and, and repurchasing their own shares. Mm -hmm. I think that Citi is fine for now. I'm going to stick with the name. We're going to see buybacks pick up a lot this year. We are. Without a doubt. Sure. Yes, I which think Which is so, going to help earnings. So the tune of $825 billion, if you believe that note from J.P. Morgan, which I see no reason mm -hmm. not to believe it. And dividends are going to go run about half a $500 billion, so okay. half a trillion dollars. So there is going to be, with the tax cuts, which is another reason why I, I like the president, at least on that policy decision, mm -hmm. is uh, those tax cuts have, are turning into a driver of equity prices going forward. Now that we, they're out there, they're well known. So they should be somewhat priced in, but I think there is still shock value when people see these, these headlines. And I, I think you're, you're going to see, at least for the time being, more of an upward push onto, onto equity prices, obviously impacted at times by headline news. Stephen, if money doesn't grow on trees, why do banks have branches? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about? <laughs> I don't know. But Just a fun thought. Let's, let, right, there's a couple about, things I want to point out about banking yeah, reserve. Very, very, I thought it very weird. Bank of America trading was lackluster. The mortgage business is no longer under its own line item on the earnings statement. The mortgage business is now part of consumer banking, which I thought was incredible, being this is Bank of America. They really kind of traded poorly for the quarter. They're only up 1%. But net interest income was up 8 I can't read my own handwriting. I think it says 13, 18%. I can't read it either. I mean, look at this. <laughs> but it was a positive. It's chicken scratch. Clint Eastwood wouldn't write like that. No, but, well, maybe he does. <laughs> he I don't know. He probably does. Goldman His Sachs. His eyes are always closed. Goldman Sachs right. was really interesting because they really kind of knocked the cover off the ball. Mm -hmm. All right? But I didn't trust it this morning. Everyone knows I came in long Goldman. I bought, I added a piece of the position that I had sold prior back on going into earnings. I already sold that that portion of the position this morning. Smart move, Gil. It turns out the way the way trading happened today, yeah, that was that was a good move. I yeah. sold it above 160. It was trading at 153 last I saw. It's already trading at a place where I might buy that portion back. I have to look at a chart when we get offset. Okay. Uh, Underwriting, as far as investment banking goes, which should be a strong suit for Goldman, underwriting was up 27%, but advisory services were down 22%. That's something of a red flag. And operating expenses were up 21%. That's a red flag. Why too. do you figure that? So, you know, I, I don't know just yet why. I mean, I don't know why clients wouldn't be using them in an advisory sense if they're using them as an underwriter. So I don't know, maybe they've lost some of their luster. Maybe they're no longer considered Goldman Sachs. I mean, I have a personal vendetta against them when, from when I was a kid. They didn't hire me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that has nothing to do. I'm happy to be long in the shares if I'm going to profit from it. Bad move, Goldman Sachs. All right. <laughs> this is what, we, what I'm going to tell you. Away from the banks, let's look at the brokers, the e-brokers. The e All right. We saw Charles Schwab, very impressive yeah. quarter from Charles Schwab. All right. Net interest income revenues were up 26%. They, get, they raised their fees and they got away with it. Client assets up 13% year over year to 3.3 trillion. They beat EPS, they beat REVs, and REVs were up 15% year over year. REVs are revenues. All right, so what does that tell us going forward for the rest of the week? That those earnings are going to be good. Well, don't, well E Trade's earnings yes. might be good. We have E Trade on Thursday afternoon. E Trade is a, a full on competitor of Schwab in the mm -hmm. space. E-Trade, we're looking for 78 cents, and the whispers are around 78 cents, on 675 million, which would be 20% revenue growth year over year. This is a name, I think, that going into, maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow, but Thursday, I will look maybe for an options play that expires the Friday and try to go get away with a little steal. 
All right, that, I don't usually like to buy options, but I might buy a call or buy a put, depending on where it's trading, mm -hmm. for as cheap as I can because it's only going to be good for one day before it expires and see if, if I throw away the money, I throw away the money, but if the stock runs three or four points, I make a few bucks. All right, well said. That's how I go with that. You're going to go with something else too, aren't you, Stephen? Well. You're going you're gonna to get your fitness on. It's time for Market Rush. Yeah, I want to do market. I mean, look how look at that. I well, think that is well, well deserving of a market rush. Well, none of this is actually Planet Fitness, but we're going to talk fitness. Let's talk it. All right, Planet Fitness is the name I got involved with today. I've been reading about the stock. It's a little expensive. Trades twenty seven times forward earnings. And why did you get involved with it first? Well, I noticed that it had increased participation via mutual funds and, and investment funds for eight straight quarters, which puts it in the same class as Nvidia. A name, another name I'm long. Mm -hmm. So it made me very interested in that. I went ahead and I bought about, about an eighth of a position. I'm not crazy here, okay? I bought it at 39 and change. I sold a call, a put rather. I sold 35 puts that expire in May after earnings. Earnings are, I think, expected on May 7th. Mm -hmm. I'll have to get back to you on the date. But the, they, it's, it, they only trade on monthly, uh, monthly options. They don't have weekly options. Mm -hmm. So I sold the $35 May puts. Mm -hmm. So if it comes in, because if you look at the chart, which we're showing you, okay. 35 is a potential support level for the stock. If it gets there, I really do want to buy it. Now, the breakout point, I feel it's positioned for a breakout. Yeah. The breakout point would be about 40 and a quarter. If it gets to 40 and a quarter, you'll be able to see that the stock's well on its way. You can see that it's, it has obeyed yeah, here it is. the Andrew, Andrew's pitchfork for quite some time now. And that is why I see support where it is. That's where I see the breakout where it is. And it's also, uh, it trades well on, on Fibonacci levels. So and, it's, it's a technical and stock. And he loves the pitchfork. Well, it's useful. Yeah. It, when, when, a stock, when you find a stock that obeys a pitchfork, it usually goes on for quite some time. And, and this name is a, a name that trades technically. Well, nice pitch, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, nice uh, uh, bull flag right there. Looks good. Yeah. No. I like it. Yeah, and... and Besides, who do they cater to? They cater to uh, the middle class, the lower middle class. It's ten dollars a month for membership. Uh, it's they stress. It's a uh, I think a judgment free zone. So they they're not catering to the steroid oh, that's crowd. That's right. Yes, it is judgment yeah. free. Mm -hmm. So they're so they're catering to folks who might not have a lot of money and folks who might not be in great shape, which is most Americans. Yeah. Cool. So I think they're I think they're positioned, positioned nicely. All right, well, let's see if other earnings this week work out the same. We have a lot to look forward to. Oh, we certainly do. All right, so let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk, Stephen. All, All right. right. LAM. LAM Research. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's actually tonight. I'm, yeah. Actually, I'm long that name. I, I, I'm very excited about LAM Research. They, the stock may react negatively. You're not, you're not really sure. It's a name that I, I keep a core position in. I also trade a portion of it in and out. I've traded this name very well, so mm -hmm. it's been a good one for me. It's not like NVIDIA, which I also love the stock just as much, and I try to do the same thing with NVIDIA, but with mixed results. Lamb has been a consistent winner for me, and I, I think they perform so well at these conference calls, but it doesn't always react the way you want it to in the, in the aftermarket and in the morning. It might take a week, mm -hmm. but I do think this stock will tell us that there is a story of demand for the products they sell to the semiconductor industry. And... I do believe that we head back to the 220 range. I think the stock is fine. All right, cool. Who else? Anyone else as uh, we wrap up? We got, we got quite a few uh, coming on Friday. I think I'm doing this out of memory, but it's... Uh, I, I have them right here. Oh, you have them right yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well, thanks, Maj. You're welcome. Okay. Jesse. Oh, Friday's General Electric. Oh, yes. That's oh. what I was hoping you would see. Oh, General Electric, Baker Hughes, General Electric, Waste Management, uh, Quite a few interesting names on Friday. Procter & Gamble. Is that, is that all Friday? I don't know if it's all Friday. Oh, okay. I mean, no, it probably is because you were telling them to me. Well, Chessie is and today. I, was, I yeah, see that. See, and Chessie also, by the way. Chronological order. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but IBM is tonight as well. Mm -hmm. All right. General Electric. This is, this is going to be interesting because they're probably going to have to restate some of their past numbers. They're probably going to have to change their projection, their, their firm guidance going forward. It's a very dangerous time, but the stock's on the move. So we're getting some positive movement here. Yeah. I'm long a lot of these. I'm also short tons of calls at different strike prices. So 
I, have, I potentially have a lot riding on Friday, although I am buttoned up kind of nicely. The only way I get hurt is if it goes to like five. You had yeah. nice, <laughs> I don't think so, but you had nice damage control, Stephen. Yeah. Got to give you that. You definitely situated yourself yeah, very, very well. I didn't do a great job by getting involved in the first place, but I have managed this position very well. Mm -hmm, and, for sure. About, kind of the way I've been managed to Apache back, back in 2017. It's, I may be able to create a disaster every now and then, but I'm pretty good at putting the fire out once it starts. <laughs> he swiffers that right up. <laughs> All right, so let's make a bet. Okay. Earnings G this Friday. Do you think they're going to, do you think the stock is going to trade higher or lower, even if they beat or not? I think that given how poorly they performed, that, it's, that I don't know. But I do think that if the stock stays on a trajectory, trajectory it's on. If we get a little upward movement going into earnings, then I'll probably take off a quarter of my position, oh. even if I'm still underwater. My basis for this name is only about 1470 now. So I'm really within striking distance of breaking even on General Electric. Mm -hmm. But if I even come close, I'm going to take some yeah. of the risk off. Because that, that's right. People are probably going to profit take because they, it's a little you know, too dangerous. And it a could lot go, of people are in this. It could go the other way, too. And then you end up with like an $11 stock, and you're, you're thinking you had a great opportunity and didn't take it. So yeah. just in the name of discipline, I'll probably take some off. If it, in the name of discipline. If it gets to 13 and a half and holds 13 and a half going into the numbers. All right. Well, up, down. You know what, Stephen? We are out, right? I think so. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Anytime.